presidential moss. Good boy, Bonzo. We're going to go uh, have a little fun. Been raining off and on since last night. It's a damp, cold 40 degrees out. So we're going to go have a little fun up the mountain. Y'all want to stick around? Stay tuned. Some good stuff there. We'll wait till we're up a little farther, but I don't want to pass it up. I don't have a saw on me. Putsy. <laughs> it's looked a little drier than everything I'm seeing around here. I'm always looking for materials for the next fire, so. Even if I got carried away, I don't care. Today, we'll do a long overdue video comparing the William Collins survival knife, the WCSK. Mine's in Nitro V steel. My car to handles. I'm not going to do too much specs on these. I'm just going to kind of go over my opinion on how, how they work for me. You know, but WCSK, 316 inch thick, pretty heavy duty knife. William Collins survival knife. And the uh, William Collins Alaska survival knife, the AKSK. This one is also Nitro V steel. And these have, this one has sure touch handles. So G10 and rubber layers somehow pressed together to make some, a pretty good handle. I like it. It's my first knife with sure touch handles. I like it. 
This one's also 3 16ths inch thick. So, let me find a little bit of a, a workbench. And we'll kind of look at these two up close and then maybe do a little field work with them. I'll tell you what I think about them. See if I can find uh, some kind of dry surface. Make a dry surface out of something out here. Starting to drizzle again. Not wrong with that. Underside of that would be dry, but that's still pretty heavy duty there. Yeah, I'm not busting that. There's something in there? Yeah, that's pretty wet. Let's see if that's a pretty. Let's see if I can't bust up work then so. There we go. A little bit dry on the other side. That'll work. Nice hard surface. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. My knee pad out. There we go. All right, here we go. Let me get you all a little close. We'll do a little close up on these. side by side so the Alaska survival knife is maybe like three-eighths of an inch longer this one is I didn't measure them I think this one is close to six inches so I would assume that the WCSK would be five and three-quarter inch blade with a whole lot of cutting surface and these are both 3 16 inch thick. They're both heavy, heavy duty, awesome blades, but they're both really slicey. Uh, the way that he does his grinds, William Collins, I think these are on like, a, don't quote me on it, you know, going back to, I'm not a stats guy, so bear with me, but I'm more of a get out and use the knife guy. Um, I'd say it's got a, like 12 or 13 degree edge. I think that's about what he does with his blades. And both of them have this nice little tooth right here. So I believe the Alaska Survival Knife has a little more pronounced tooth right here. There's a slight, slight better angle right here on the AKSK, not the WCSK. And then, of course, you have a little bit more of a flat surface here, whereas it's more of a more of a belly here. So this one, overall, would be much better for processing gain, in my opinion. Big gain. Of course, you could do it with this one. You just don't have the same angles as you do on this blade up here. You got a little thumb ramp at the bottom of each. Pretty thick handles. Down below you have a recessed, I think is what it would be called, lanyard hole that dips down in below the handle there. I really like that on both of these. And both of these, the butt end here this is sharp, so you could use them to dig out a spoon. And some of my other videos using his knives, I've kind of messed around with that. And both of these have a sharp spine, which I really like. I love the sharp spine. The only thing that I wish with these was that it was these were an O1 tool steel. But I have other knives in O1 of his, so. These are nice because I don't have to worry about these when it's raining and wet and snowy. I could drop this out in the yard, which I would never want but, to do. I mean, you don't have to worry about keeping up on the blade as much. Just keep it sharp. You don't have to worry about it rusting out. Now, I've never had that problem with carbon steel blades because I, you know, I use them. I'll wipe them off on my jeans or my pants, and that's it. I don't even oil oil them and they get by just fine for me get a nice patina on them but we're not talking about that right now we're so they're both stainless steel you don't have to worry about 
them rusting out on you, a little less maintenance on them. And the way that he, he treats his stainless has a really good edge retention and it's super tough. Nitro V is a pretty tough stainless steel. Like in my opinion, and I'm not a metallurgist, Nitro V is kind of got the toughness of getting into some of the carbon steels and you get the benefits of it not rusting. I just love the way it looks with those carbon steels getting that patina. But when it comes down to it, I can sacrifice for such a fine tool as these. And really, the only thing that you know, I'm not going to be able to get a spark off the spine with one of these. But I carry so much fire starters, what does it matter? You know? So let's get into doing a little work with each of these. Depending on where you get the knives, they're going to come with uh, sheaths different sheath so both of these I got from Great Northern Knives up in Alaska and both of them came with this same sheath here this was uh, this is from Ghost Town Leather in Alaska and this it comes this is just a really fine heavy-duty leather sheath has the uh, little spot for a ferro rod there which is pretty cool now I have made my own my own sheath for both of these knives I wanted to bring one of the ones that came with the knife just so you could all could see if you got one from Great Northern Knives um, I also do my own leather work and tooling so here's one that I made and this one I made specifically for the Alaska survival knife one thing that's nice about both of these blades is they're they're pretty good, pretty decent at chopping. I mean, it's not going to substitute for a hatchet, small hatchet or something, but I get by pretty good using these. Let's go. Uh, let's go over here. Destroy a little rhododendron. That stuff is almost invasive, in my opinion. That there, that's some mountain laurel, and I don't want to chop up some mountain laurel. But, I see over here we got some rhododendrons. I'll see how each one of these performs. Alright, start off with uh, WCSK. A little chopping with this. kind of bushwhack I have bushwhacked with this knife here I've bushwhacked with both I would prefer using my hunter gatherer but this is what you got it does a good enough job to bushwhack through the woods you know kind of clear a trail if you got to got this nice flat surface here but I also kind of when I'm chopping I like to get down in there right behind that tooth and it just kind of really gets slicing through does a darn good job I'm gonna use the other one now a little bit a little bit with the Alaska survival knife trains coming both really good for clearing a trail. Get up behind with that tooth.
last good survival knife. WCSK. Ah, this is pretty rotted. But I really love this flat edge for doing a little bit of detailed chopping with the survival knife. Flatten this out a little bit. Definitely get by with it. Does a fairly good job. Flattened her out. Let's see how the Alaska survival knife does. So when it comes to this kind of work, I think the William Collins Survival Knife, the WCSK, does a slightly better, actually, like, almost efficient job. Now this one works pretty good too, but I think the WCSK beats it out just a tad. Just because it has that flat edge instead of this belly. But. If this is what you had out there, I'd be happy. You definitely get by with it. some of this out of the way real quick. This time I'll start off with the Alaska survival knife. And get this bark off. This knife does not have the original edge on it, but it did come extremely sharp. I have long since used that edge, dulled it, and made my own edge on it. But just to be able to get up behind there with this tooth, man. Let me. You could just shave off to get down to some drier stuff. All right. Some fish. 
thick ones. stuff's a little damp but we'll say it save it it'll dry out quick Try that survival knife a little bit. And I left the left the knotty piece for this one. It's all right. Here we'll do a little more chopping with this one. I really like this one for doing some chopping. This, this one excels in the chopping department. This one would excel in the skin and game department. I could probably rough out a, a bow with this. I might try that one day. Busted my knuckle open on this piece of wood. Alright. Here we'll say you want to get yourself a little. Here we'll flip this over. That'll work. That work? Nope. Alright. Let's say you want to. I want to make myself a little spear. A little tent stake. some flat papery feathers. Be 
nice to have a nice flat surface. Great to have a flat surface. You know, a little stump to work on or something, but this is real life here. This is how I, this would have to be my workbench if I was out here. You know, you just got to work with what you got. Can't find a perfect stick to do any feathers either. I just gotta work with what I got, right? Having that tooth there just kind of locks it up in there for you. Real nice for doing a little bit of bushcrafting, fire prep. See if I get something a little straighter here. Both of them are good enough, and for such a big, thick blade, can't really beat the feathers I'm getting. I mean, I'm sure a professional would be able yeah, to do a little I'm better. just a dude running around in the woods. That's it. Just having some fun with my dog. That's what I like to do. And I love knives. how flat feathers get up in there get up in the dry wood
Alaska's survival knife. So they're both, I mean, comes down to it, they're very similar. The only, the main difference that I would say, in my opinion, between using these two out here is this one would be get better for skinning and processing game. And this one just does a little bit better. You can almost substitute a small hatchet for this. I would say this, I mean, for me, this might even be better than a small tomahawk for me. You know, you got that nice flat bit of surface to do some chopping and woodworking. Both of the tips are fairly the same. The Alaska Survival Knives, the Alaska Survival Knives tip is just a little bit, comes to more of a, a skinny point there. And the William Collins Survival Knife has a more robust tip. So if you're doing a lot of, you know, poking and stabbing and jamming into some heavy duty material, you get by a little better with that William Collins Survival Knife. But both of them, it just has that big reinforced tip on it. The Alaska Survival Knife has a little bit finer of a tip. It's all what you want. You know, a hunter up in some big game land, I'd probably go with the Alaska Survival Knife. Somebody that's going to be living in a city or in the country and just wants an all-around decent knife. Like if I had to have one knife, it very well could be the William Collins Survival Knife. It just does everything good. I don't have any fruit or any food out here to go prepping, but, I mean, that's another good reason to have it in stainless, both of them. You know, food prep. All right, let's see if we can strike a ferro rod and get a little bit of a fire going real quick. No. Oh. All right, let's see if we can scrape a little fat wood down in here. This is some hard, heavy-duty fat wood full of pine tar and resinous goodness. Get up in that th thumb ramp there. That's a good spot to dig in and get some shavings. Let me bust this in half real quick. Doing the trick. I'm getting a little bit down in there. See if I can.
So that was the William Kahn survival knife. And let's switch over to the Alaska survival knife. Do the same thing. Dang, I got into a good spot with this one, huh? Woo! That's getting it. Found a good little nugget. Got that. All right. Almost lost this one. It's farting around with the other one. Almost lost it. This wood is super damp, and I did get down into some drier stuff messing around here, but. So I'm not going to say both of them do a good job getting the fire going because it's not the knife that does it and anybody that says it is is tricking you. Now I will say that both of these knives helped me to fairly easily. I didn't have a hard time getting the fire going with either of these knives. They both uh, were up to the task. Just the way they're designed. Awesome. Awesome design. Both of them. If I had to pick one, I really couldn't uh, really couldn't say which one I'd pick. That'd be a tough decision. I'd take either of them. If y'all could get your hands on either of them, I would.
You might have to put a pre-order in, but it's well worth the wait. Well worth the wait. This over here. We'll condense it down into one fire. I love them both. Both wonderful, wonderful tool to have out in the woods. There's a reason they're called survival knives. Because you definitely, if you got the skills, hone your skills, these would help you to survive. The one thing different about the William Con survival knife has a bow divot, bow drill divot in the handle. Both of them do not. Just this William. Now I don't know if some of the other ones have one, but uh, William Conn's WCSK has the bow drill divot, and Alaska Survival Knife does not. But I ain't going to hold you all up anymore. Let me know which one you all would pick, which one you'd choose. Or do you have either of them, and what do you think of it? You like them? I appreciate you all watching, especially if you made it to the end, and I hope you all enjoyed it. And... I think the next video is going to be for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. I think I'll figure out what I want to give away, and I'm going to have a video coming out soon. So stay tuned, and you all have a good one. See ya.